Uh, good morning. We are honored today to welcome to the Heritage Foundation Ambassador George Christian Mayor, the Romanian ambassador to the United States, to share his thoughts on the U.S.-Romanian missile defense cooperation efforts. And uh, Romania, Ro excuse me, Romania has set an example in defending NATO allies from short and medium-range ballistic missile threats. It is the first ally to host the Aegis Ashore ballistic missile defense site in Europe, which became operational in May of 2016. Ambassador Mayor has served as Romania's ambassador to the United States since September 17, 2015. Between 1992 and 1997, he was a diplomat in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And between 1997 and 1999, he was charged affairs at the Romanian Embassy in Ireland. Between 2000 and 2004, he held the position of State Secretary and head of the Department for Euro Atlantic Integration and Defense Policy in the Ministry of National Defense. In that capacity, he was responsible for coordinating Romania's NATO accession process. In 2004, he was conferred the rank of ambassador. In November 2004, Mr. Mayor was elected senator in the Romanian parliament, where he held various key positions. In 2006, the ambassador was appointed the fourth director of the Romanian Intelligence Service. And during his eight years at the helm of that agency, the service went through an extensive reform process, which allowed it to strengthen bilateral and multilateral partnerships with the most important intelligence services in the democratic world, as well as to gain and consolidate a high level of public confidence. In 1992, Mr. Mayor received his Master's of Law degree at George Washington University, Washington, DC. And in 1997, he was conferred a PhD in international law at the, I'll probably get this wrong, Babas Bolyoy University in, okay, good. <laughs> Thank you, sir. He is a university professor at the Department of International Relations and European Integration within the National School of Political Studies and Public Administration in Bucharest. Ambassador Mayor has published a great number of articles and books covering topics from human rights and public law to international relations, strategic thinking, security, and intelligence studies. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Ambassador Mayor. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, uh, Dr. Spohr, for this kind introduction. Uh, I would like to thank also your team for uh, this invitation and uh, for convening this event on missile defense cooperation between uh, United States uh, and Romania. Let me also express my uh, gratitude to, to the Heritage Foundation for its uh, really exceptional leadership on relevant matters on international uh, security. Just last year, in fact, uh, the Heritage Foundation hosted uh, the Romanian president, Mr. Klaus Johannes, uh, during his uh, visit, uh, official visit uh, to Washington, D.C. And it was a dedicated public event, an opportunity, in fact, uh, to outline the strong strategic partnership uh, between the uh, United States and uh, Romania. Um, and let us also remember that during the meeting of our two presidents, uh, we welcome the US president expressing his strong commitment to our partnership as well as for the first time then, an interesting to the allied collective defense to the Article 5 of the Washington Treaty during the common press conference in the Rose Garden. Well, in my remarks today, I would like to refer first uh, to the overall threats uh, to our security that uh, we all share and how we are working with the U.S. and with allies uh, to address them. Second, please allow me to point to the U.S.-Romanian missile defense cooperation and the perspectives of uh, this cooperation. And third, uh, to we emphasize that our bilateral cooperation constitutes a meaningful contribution 
to NATO development of uh, missile and defense uh, capability. Ladies and gentlemen, the security environment today is, of course, marked by unpredictability and great power competition effect uh, witnessed actually over the past uh, years and recognized, of course, uh, in the recent U.S. Uh, national security strategy. Over the past uh, years, we have seen overall negative developments in international affairs, unfortunately. Europe uh, and the United States have been confronted with a resurgent uh, Russia, with its aggressive conduct in the region east of uh, the NATO border, as well as in many aspects of our societies. Mm. Such conduct included, if you remember, the Russian invasion of Georgia, the 2014 annexation of Crimea, and as I've mentioned, the continuous Russian involvement and aggression in eastern Ukraine, the use of hybrid warfare tactics, of influence and propaganda tactics, and the use of cyber actions in an attempt to interfere in the election processes in Europe and elsewhere, even here. Mm. We have seen a, a rapid Russian military buildup in Crimea, which, by the way, it's only 100 less, in fact, uh, than 150 miles from uh, Romania's shores, than practically from a NATO shore. The deployment of anti-access and area denial system uh, and other military assets uh, in the Black Sea area. Aside from uh, their control of the area, these uh, assets are also a means to project power beyond this region, so beyond even the Black Sea, towards the southeastern part of the Mediterranean, and with uh, uh, connections uh, to, to Syria, uh, even. Uh, Russia's actions reflect an approach based on the use of force and geopolitical competition while rejecting cooperation and engagement. This approach manifests itself across the whole eastern flank of NATO, practically from the Baltic Sea to, to the Black Sea. Such uh, developments uh, in the east of NATO confirm the strategic importance of the Black Sea and the Bla Baltic Sea regions for the whole Euro-Atlantic area and reflect the need to consolidate NATO's deterrence and defense posture. In this regard, the United States committed uh, to European security and continues to commit uh, we welcome robust political statements on the U.S. commitment to its allies, including the strong references in the U.S. strategic documents. I mentioned the national security strategy, but also the national defense strategy and uh, the nuclear posture review. Also, constant increases in the funds allocated to the European De Deterrence Initiative and the presence of uh, U.S. forces in Europe are uh, indicative, of course, of this approach. In this context, border sharing plays, plays an important uh, role. Romania takes its commitments uh, very seriously. Uh, we continue practically to allocate 2% of the GDP for defense and use a significant share of this budget, I would say around 40%, towards military procurement capabilities and readiness over the next uh, decade. This is a cross-party agreement to allocate 2% uh, for defense. Uh, it was a process initiated by the president, and again, it's uh, a long-term uh, commitment uh, of Romania to uh, increase its spending on defense and develop its uh, capabilities for a strong uh, deterrence posture in the region, and of course, uh, a strong contribution to the collect collective defense of uh, NATO. Last year, for example, we initiated significant investments in our defense, 
especially uh, in areas connected uh, with missile defense. Uh, for example, we signed a uh, uh, $4 billion deal for the purchase of seven Patriot system, systems, which are completely, of course, interoperable with allied uh, capabilities. And these systems will be operational uh, according to our planning at the end of next year or uh, at least the beginning of 2019. Uh, uh, this year also we concluded uh, the acquisition of a high mobility artillery rocket system uh, which also will contribute uh, to this posture uh, of deterrence uh, in the region. We also signed an agreement for armored transporters and continue with uh, prospects to uh, acquire more F-16s. We already acquired uh, uh, 12, but we want to reach uh, 48, the number of uh, F-16 uh, helicopters and multi-role uh, corvettes. Uh, for the uh, back sea. These projects present, uh, of course, opportunities for practical cooperation also between our defense industries. Now turning to my main point, uh, missile defense uh, cooperation. Um, we believe that all of us, we continue allies to face uh, major ballistic missile threats. And this is widely a knowledge. Uh, North Korea's heated uh, rhetoric, uh, significant testing of vectors with increased ranges can hold both the United States and Europe at risk. We look forward, though, to future opportunities for dialogue, as we've seen recently, uh, that, result, that should result, hopefully, in safeguarding international peace uh, and security. Against uh, some UN Security Council resolutions also, Iran has continued to develop a ballistic missile program and to aim for the increase of range and sophistication uh, of its ballistic uh, arsenal. And unfortunately, it's we witness a growing interest from non-state actors to acquire and use advanced missile technology, which poses an immediate risk to our populations, of course, forces, and uh, territories. This uh, demonstrates clearly that the threat posed by proliferation of ballistic missiles is real. It's not just a regional threat, but a global one that affects each and every one of us. <coughs> and therefore, we think we need more missile defense, not less. We have seen the robust U.S. approach on missile defense in the past year, and uh, we are looking forward to the upcoming missile defense review, where allied cooperation and burden sharing play a, a, an important role. And I think we think that the cooperation on missile defense between U.S. and Romania may provide uh, an example uh, in this regard. Uh, NATO, of course, has acknowledged the ballistic missile threat at the Lisbon summit in 2010 and decided to develop an allied missile defense uh, capability. The aim of this cap capability is to provide full coverage and protection for all NATO European populations, territory, and forces against the increasing threats posed by the proliferation of uh, ballistic missiles. A significant uh, political decision, a strategic decision reaffirmed by all summit declarations since then. Within this context and sharing a strategic partnership uh, with the U.S., Romania's decision to host the first ages ashore of the U.S.-European phase adaptive approach came as a natural contribution to the development of the NATO ballistic missile defense uh, capability, apart from our bilateral uh, relationship, strategic relationship with US. 
Romania's participation in the missile defense has enjoyed strong political and public uh, support. Practically, the ballistic missile defense agreement between U.S. and Romania, negotiated in fact between 2010 and 2011, was signed and ratified almost uh, unanimously by the Romanian parliament in 2011. Uh, the construction works of the Aegis Ashore broke ground in October 2013, and uh, they were completed by the end of 2015. The Aegis Ashore site was uh, inaugurated on May 12, 2016, and command and control was transferred to NATO, the Alliance Warships Summit of uh, that year, thus extending the coverage of the Allied system. This exceptional cooperation on missile defense with uh, the United States remains a confirmation of the U.S. commitment to the European security and defense and a guarantee of our transatlantic bond. Thus, the first ages ashore has a strategic value on all accounts. Also, Romanian investments in capabilities such as in the Patriot systems I've mentioned Refro reflect uh, the importance uh, my country places on missile defense cooperation towards a more interoperable and integrated NATO missile defense architecture. This leads to my third point, the importance of our missile defense cooperation for NATO as a whole. Last year, as the Aegis Ashore was made operational and transferred to NATO at the Warsaw Summit, the Alliance declared the NATO B and D initial operational uh, capability. This is a practical result and a contribution um, to the overall Allied defense and deterrence. More allies contribute to, to this capability. Of course, Germany hosts the Allied Command Center. Turkey hosts the US early warning radar. Spain hosts four US Aegis ships in Rota. Denmark and the uh, Netherlands upgrade ships with uh, radar capabilities. UK contributes with ground-based uh, radars. And Poland will host a second Aegis ashore site uh, very shortly. As allies, we attach great importance to the development of the NATO BMD capability towards achieving full operational uh, capability. This capability combined with nuclear and conventional uh, capabilities has become part of uh, NATO's overall strategy for credible deterrence and defense. Uh, therefore, NATO BNB is a long-term investment against a long-term threat, we believe. It proves that NATO is capable uh, to adapt to actual threats, demonstrates commitment of allies to share the burden, for this important capability, and specifically reduces the risk to allies posed by ballistic missiles, both through the deterrence and the protection it provides. Uh, the NATO missile defense capability, as well as the Aegis Ashore missile defense facility, has been an entirely defensive uh, project and endeavor developing the spirit of cooperation and uh, transparency. They do not aim, and I underline this, to affect strategic stability or undermine in any way uh, Russia's strategic nuclear deterrent. <clears throat> Russia uh, also claimed that uh, NATO missile defense and the Aegis Ashore violate, violate uh, the INF uh, Treaty. This claim is clearly uh, false, the Aegis Ashore system cannot be used to launch missiles covered by the INF uh, Treaty. Ladies and gentlemen, um, today as the United States is in the process of updating its missile defense review, we reflect how important missile defense cooperation with allies and partners is for responding to threats, to our peace and security, and in a conclusion, uh, it highlights the strategic importance of the Aegis Ashore project that fits into a larger regional context. It contributes and demonstrates the US and allies' capacity to adapt to new and sophisticated challenges. 
It underscores the relevance of the burden sharing, solidarity and indivisibility of uh, security within NATO and the solidity of the regional missile defense architecture. And we believe it consolidates the transatlantic link and overall collective uh, defense of NATO. So thank you for your attention and I'm looking forward to your commentaries or questions. Uh, on this very interesting topic. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, the ambassador has agreed to take some questions. I don't know if we have a, yeah, we have a microphone, and so if you would uh, raise your hand, uh, you know, give us your name and an affiliation if you have one, and uh, we'll uh, raise it to the mic. Thank you so much for your excellent remarks, Michaela Dodge Heritage Foundation. Sir, how did you get to that broad political consensus in Romania to support U.S. missile defense cooperation because it was much more kind of contentious issue in other countries, for example, in the Czech Republic? Thank you. Uh, thank you. It's a very good question. Uh, first, historically, there is a very good uh, perception in Romania on uh, cooperation uh, with U.S., as our best ally, that in constant the opinion polls show the support of 70 to 80 percent uh, for this uh, cooperation. And I think in terms of uh, viewing this project as a security project to uh, also uh, defend our populations, it was supported also by the public opinion. Of course, the government and uh, Parliament had a, a good communication uh, strategy in, in this respect. I, I understand there were some problems in the Czech Republic because also of uh, certain uh, propaganda, uh, let's say, uh, mm. measures uh, undertaken by some external forces. But this is another uh, aspect and a sensitive question. Um, Again, we are uh, uh, very much in favor of uh, U.S.-Romanian cooperation at the level of the public opinion, and this fits into this uh, cooperation of missile defense project. Thank you. Hi. My name is Lauri Melks. I'm a fellow here at uh, Woodrow Wilson Center, otherwise international law professor in Estonia. N you know, Russians always ask back in, in terms of these kind of NATO deployments that, you know, who is, who are you afraid of or who, who is threatening you? So politically, countries like yours and, and mine, Estonia, we, we always need to answer these, these, these questions. I, the, the thing with Romania is that Romania has also an interesting neighboring country in the East uh, Republic of Moldova, a part of which used to be, mo main part of which used to be part of Romania in the interwar period. I wanted to ask you, also considering your past jobs, how do you, how do you see the, the current situation there in, in terms of both Republic of Moldova as, as well as this Transnistria part? Thank you. A very <clears throat> interesting question indeed. Uh, and your commentary also. What I will respond also a bit to this commentary when we are asked, uh, the Baltic states, Romania, Poland, uh, what are we afraid of? The answer is sometimes very simple. We witness developments in our region which are very negative from a uh, security point of view, like uh, what happened in Crimea, the acquisition, illegal acquisition practically of uh, territory uh, near NATO borders. What happened with cyber attacks in, in uh, the Baltics uh, area, which were uh, very intense and critical in terms of uh, their intensity on uh, the infrastructure of uh, those countries. What happened in uh, Ukraine, eastern part of Ukraine, again, at our borders. Uh, so those are concrete material facts that really require a response and uh, a, a program of uh, deterrence on behalf of NATO and, uh, and those countries. And I'm glad that they are cooperating well also in a so-called B nine format, all the countries from the Baltic states to uh, the Black Sea uh, on the eastern flank of NATO, 
uh, have common conferences uh, gather uh, together uh, to uh, re-emphasize the need for NATO uh, to maintain solidarity with this type of challenges. And, and it, those are uh, great developments in terms of our solidarity also in, in this region. Uh, with uh, respect to Moldova, of course, uh, it's a very uh, important year now for Moldova. They will have elections uh, very soon. Now they have in place a pro-European government. They have an EU agreement. They are trying, uh, struggling with uh, reforms to, um, let's say, uh, accelerate uh, their uh, European uh, project, which is not easy because the country still suffers from uh, economic uh, backlash and uh, from uh, uh, all sorts of uh, threats to their democracy because of their also their big neighbors, uh, but uh, it's a pro-European government. It depends very much on the outcome of these elections, uh, the orientation uh, of this country. We are trying ourselves together with other European allies to assist as much as possible Moldova in terms of uh, developing their uh, uh, reforms uh, in terms of uh, economic assistance, for example, Romania Besides, I think U.S. is the largest donor in terms of uh, funding uh, for Moldova uh, each year. Uh, all sorts of interconnectivity projects in terms of uh, energy, uh, just to enhance their uh, energy security and energy uh, independence, uh, because they are very dependent, of course, on Russian gas and electricity all sorts of uh, things that we are doing either at the European Union level or uh, uh, on a bilateral basis to consolidate this trend, which is still positive. Of course, it has its ups and downs, but still pro-European. Uh, we must be very uh, careful, however, in terms of uh, the future prospect of uh, this country, in terms of uh, the political forces that uh, will confront uh, uh, themselves in the next uh, election. And uh, we hope that uh, the population, which uh, uh, still needs to see the benefit of uh, getting closer to the European Union, will uh, support uh, the European path uh, of uh, uh, this uh, small uh, country, Moldova, but very important and significant in terms of uh, its uh, position uh, there in the region. Transnistria, it's uh, again a frozen conflict. This is a, uh, an aspect that preoccupies us. There are so many frozen conflicts on the eastern, uh, let's say, NATO frontier. Frozen conflicts uh, are being used also uh, by Russia as a factor in uh, their uh, policies in the region that can always be, uh, let's say, stimulated in a negative sense uh, to erupt in uh, open uh, conflicts, in uh, hot conflicts, let's say. Uh, and this is not good for the stability and the security of uh, the region. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Um, my name is Denitsa Nikolova. I'm from the Heritage Foundation. And my question was, clearly, Romania has such a strong cooperation with the US, and especially uh, with Sabre Guardian 2017. Yeah. And the eastern flank of NATO is has um, assurance from the US. How can we move forward to continue supporting you and continue um, giving you that assurance and holding down the eastern flank? Well, that's a very good question. Thank you. I think uh, we need, uh, and we are approaching a uh, NATO summit uh, very soon, uh, this uh, summer, this June, still at the level of your support for NATO to further uh, their presence uh, on the eastern flank, irrespective if we talk uh, of the Baltic area or the Black Sea area of enhanced presence or uh, 
that type of notions used uh, in NATO. We need to see more uh, capabilities in terms of creating a solid environment for uh, strong uh, deterrence uh, in light of these actions. And of course, the uh, US uh, is critical uh, in, 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 this, uh, in this respect. Also, there are uh, those projects I've mentioned, uh, common cooperation on various uh, new systems uh, for deterrence. Uh, US is needed also from this perspective to have a, a greater presence in terms of our common exercises. You mentioned that exercise, which was the biggest one uh, practically uh, in uh, the history of the cooperation of allies with US. We need to show uh, solidarity. We need to show uh, capacity to react quickly. Uh, to various uh, crises, we need uh, political support. So those are aspects that we discuss continuously with the U.S. Uh, government, and we're pleased uh, that uh, we've received uh, a positive response, not only us, but of course other allies from the region, Poland, the Baltic states, uh, Bulgaria, etc. Thank you. Sir, you, uh, you mentioned, Mr. Ambassador, you mentioned the missile defense review that's underway. We think that'll come out maybe next month. I was wondering what you would, if you had a chance to write it or if you could influence it, what would you like to see in that defense review, missile defense review? Well, thank you. Thank you. I, I would have wished to have a chance to write it, but <laughs> that's not the case. Uh, anyway, uh, apart from reemphasizing the importance of missile defense in this overall strategic uh, environment uh, which is exposed to threats uh, from ballistic uh, missiles and that's clearly an objective of uh, this review to make it more robust to develop it according to the actual uh, threats uh, to see uh, uh, highlighted also the, those types of cooperation that you have in the area of missile defense like the one with Romania which is a successful cooperation, a model that can be expanded according, of course, to uh, the security environment. I've mentioned the fact that the next project uh, which is underway right now is with Poland. Uh, it's very important to uh, see that uh, projects being successful uh, for NATO and uh, for the region. But there are other prospects uh, in other parts of uh, the world. Uh, where you have cooperation of such type. And I think emphasizing the fact that uh, it works so well, uh, also in the missile uh, defense review, it will uh, be good uh, for understanding the, the relevance of uh, missile defense today in today's environment. Thank you so much. Um, so. We talked about missile defense review. You, t you mentioned briefly the nuclear posture review. What was Romanian perspective on the new 2018 nuclear posture review? Yes, I think, uh, <coughs> first of all, highlights a continuity with uh, policies uh, from the past. It uh, expresses the relevance of a nuclear uh, uh, deterrence, uh, nuclear uh, NATO posture, so we are very satisfied with uh, uh, this uh, review. Rachel Zesimos with the Heritage Foundation. Um, how has missile defense contributed to the cohesion of NATO, and how does an Aegis Shore site um, advance NATO's missile defense capabilities? Well, I, I mentioned in my presentation that it was integrated uh, into uh, NATO ballistic missile defense. Uh, practically, uh, it advanced uh, that uh, defense uh, in NATO with covering uh, areas that were not uh, previously covered by uh, missile defense uh, according to uh, an analysis of the threat environment, I mentioned Iran. So part, practically parts of uh, the eastern flank of NATO, the southern part of NATO were not a central 
European uh, part of NATO were not covered uh, by missile defense. So integrating this uh, project into NATO ballistic missile defense practically uh, covers uh, almost the entire territory of NATO. Of course, with uh, the development uh, in Poland, it may be uh, covered uh, completely. So that's a great addition to uh, ballistic missile defense uh, in NATO and a contribution to collective defense. Hi, good morning, sir. Uh, John O'Connell, uh, National Guard Bureau. So um, talking about the, the expansion of the partnership into Poland, um, being someone who's uh, served in Poland before, I know that interoperability is a, uh, is a very important concept when it comes to uh, NATO security cooperation. Uh, could you describe the strategy that's being used to, uh, to increase interoperability um, with the, the Polish military and the, and the Poles? Thank yeah, you. we have a, an excellent strategic partnership. Practically, we are the biggest uh, countries uh, in that part of Europe with uh, the, big, the biggest uh, military uh, capabilities. Uh, so we have a constant dialogue with Poland. We've, uh, in practical terms, uh, we've uh, decided to allocate a, a battalion for this multinational brigade in Poland on a, a permanent uh, uh, basis uh, over there. Uh, we have uh, common exercises uh, in a multilateral or bilateral uh, format exchange of information. So it's a very good cooperation with Poland uh, in the region. Hello, Ambassador, again, <laughs> uh, Dinsa Nikolova. Um, I, was, I was actually interested to hear you speak about propaganda during the decision of, of supporting missile defense um, in Romania. And I was just really interested to hear, to hear you speak about how the ups and downs of it, downs of it, as you were gathering support and whether it influenced public opinion or not, and hear more about it. It's a very sensitive uh, issue. <laughs> and, uh, so, yeah. Well, uh, it's a overall it's a, a very pressing uh, issue in uh, in Europe, as uh, we've noticed. Uh, we don't speak only about propaganda, we speak about active measures, we speak about cyber attacks, we speak about those you know, complex uh, new tools used uh, with uh, sophisticated technology to create, uh, let's say, uh, questions inside societies with respect uh, to or allied contribution, for example, to create disunity uh, among uh, allies to influence decision making, either in Brussels or in uh, NATO, in EU, to uh, create uh, skepticism uh, with respect to uh, funds allocated, for example, for defense. There are this type of propaganda saying, okay, you have problems uh, with uh, social problems, uh, health problems, education need funds for education, why do you spend so much on, on defense as a uh, continuous uh, rhetoric? Uh, so um, this type of uh, actions are very well coordinated, very well pointed uh, to uh, various states in not only Romania, but uh, I spoke about Poland, other states, of course, in Central and Eastern Europe, but also Western Europe. Uh, with, again, the aim to recreate this unity, to create uh, a lack of solidarity, to create uh, skepticism, uh, to generate uh, decisions that are not uh, favorable in terms of allied uh, solidarity. Uh, we have in place uh, measures uh, to counteract uh, such a type of propaganda, various measures. We discuss this also in an allied context. Uh, it's not easy because it's a new type of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, I won't say war, but a new type of uh, uh, extension of uh, uh, power through sophisticated uh, narratives and other type of means uh, to enhance uh, the projection of power. So 
it's a, an aspect that we need to reflect uh, upon and to see what are the best uh, measures, intelligent measures uh, uh, to counteract them and uh, to uh, also convince our public so far uh, uh, of our course of action, which is positive in terms of uh, a certain notion of peace and stability in, in, in the region and in Europe. I hope that was <laughs> at least uh, a bit clear. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, here, sorry, Ambassador. Uh, Fred Bartos from the Heritage Foundation. Uh, on your prepared remarks, you started talking about EDI and the role that it has played in both in Romania and in Europe. Can you expand a little bit on that? Uh, how have the, the European Deterrence Initiative actually played out, both as a signaling device and, and what extra has the, have those resources actually affected in the continent? Yeah, thank you. Very good question. Uh, first of all, it was a quick response to a degrading security environment on the eastern flank of the entire eastern flank of NATO. The presence of uh, U.S. troops in the region, the exercises uh, that were uh, developed under this initiative, uh, the fact that it increased interoperability, that it brought resources in development of capabilities in, in the region, at a symbolic and a material level, really uh, creating the uh, more balanced environment. Uh, um, just to remember, this uh, process was in this process practically. This uh, 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 policy was initiated immediately after uh, uh, Crimea. Uh, there was a very, very preoccupying uh, 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 environment in the region with. Uh, those developments in Crimea, in Ukraine, and uh, of course the presence of again of American uh, troops on the ground really uh, managed to rebalance uh, at a symbolic level, a perception level, but also in terms of re resources and uh, uh, capabilities, uh, the uh, the environment, the security environment in the region, which was very debalanced. Dr. Unger, I'm a local practitioner. Originally, uh, my family was from Europe. And uh, I'm wondering, since you're close to the situation, you mentioned Crimea, um, how the situation in the Ukraine looks to you at this time? Well, it's still, thank you for your question, it's still very un unstable, many incidents now real progress in terms of uh, uh, what's happening in southeastern uh, Ukraine. Ukraine is our largest neighbor. Uh, as a NATO country, we share the largest uh, frontier of a EU country and a NATO country with Ukraine. We need to see Ukraine uh, stable, uh, engage on a democratic uh, uh, path, uh, and uh, independent in terms of uh, various influences. But uh, again, with all the efforts of uh, uh, the Minsk agreement, the Minsk agreement is far away from being uh, implemented, uh, unfortunately. And uh, uh, this is not good for the overall stability and security of the region. It's good that US has uh, uh, been seen more involved uh, in uh, in this issue uh, with the appointment of a special uh, ambassador for uh, envoy for uh, discussions on uh, Ukraine, but we still need to see a concrete progress. We are far away from. Sir, you talked about how um, 
Romania is buying the Patriot uh, missile system. You've uh, engaged in this bilateral uh, Aegis Ashore system, again, uh, very helpful to NATO. And then as you look across the Black Sea, we've got uh, Turkey. And Turkey is, um, has made agreements that to buy the Russian S-400 uh, ballistic missile defense system, you know, their most advanced system. And it's uh, really striking, and it, you know, it won't tie into the NATO system. I was wondering if you have any sense of what's going on, uh, why would President Erdogan do that, and where do we go from here? Yeah, well, first of all, Turkey is a critical ally and should be uh, engaged because it's critical for the southern flank of NATO and uh, in a more broader picture for stability in a wider area, including the Middle East. Uh, unfortunately, there were uh, developments in terms of a certain dynamic in the relationship with Russia recently. We hope that only tactical, and we think that Turkey still uh, uh, wants to uh, uh, be a, uh, a trusted ally uh, in NATO. This is its long-term uh, policy. Of course, this is a concrete issue. It's ongoing uh, in terms of discussions that we're having inside the alliance. We hope that uh, it won't uh, affect uh, aspects related uh, to NATO interoperability and uh, internally, of course, it will be, in case it is uh, finalized, it won't be uh, part of uh, uh, NATO uh, structure of uh, forces, that's clear. Uh, but we s will see uh, at the end of this uh, story. It's very preoccupying, of course, but again, for us, Turkey, and for NATO allies, is a very, very uh, critical ally. We need to keep it engaged. We have an excellent strategic partnership with Turkey also, and we are discussing constantly with them. In fact, we have also a trilateral format with Poland of continuous consultation on the entire eastern and southern flank of NATO. Consultations will take place very soon again. Uh, it's, a, it's a systematic format. We meet uh, constantly, and we have this discussion in June uh, together with our Polish colleagues. So, a very good question. We hope that, uh, again, uh, Turkey uh, is being engaged as a very critical and important ally uh, uh, for NATO and for us. Mm -hmm.